Lord, you have been so faithful. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm so thankful for a church that will heed the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 7. I know I taught on this in the book of John. And Matthew talks about it a lot in the same way. But there are some similarities. But I'm mainly just going to look at Matthew's discourse on judging. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Very familiar passage. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. Boy, that's, that's tough. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck out of your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Now Jesus covered the whole basis from start to finish. Right here. Oh, I know you're sensing Him as much as I'm sensing Him right now in this service. He's here. He's here. He's here. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to speak on this, but the very next thing he talks about after judging is what again? In verse 7. Prayer. I can't, get, I, I can't say it enough. If you're praying, you're depending. But if you're not praying right now, I encourage you to depend on Him. Depend on Him. Last week we talked about Matthew chapter 7, or, or, or not Matthew, but Matthew 6 at the end. We discussed worry in detail. Went through a lot of it. We understand worry's not of God. Worry is something that keeps our, our hearts divided, just like our nation. Okay? Um, but today, before I pray, for this message, I want to pray that God's Spirit would be poured out in our hearts because today I want to talk to you about self-righteous fault-finding. Man, that's tough, Pastor. Self-righteous fault-finding. And we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Heavenly Father, show us Jesus again. He's our standard of all things. May our hearts, Lord, be convicted as we go through Your Word today. Because conviction is a good thing. And Father, may we have understanding according to Your Scriptures. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I believe in this passage of Scripture, not only is Jesus just speaking to His disciples, but he's very concerned about how critical Christians can be in their hearts toward anybody. Now he's talking in this passage to brothers and sisters, but I promise you it doesn't just stop there. 
And I'm going to show you in just a little bit. I'll take you through a how to how, how to have wisdom when because well, let me just say it like this. Some people we just don't think before we speak. And it doesn't matter who we're speaking to. How many of you know we don't have the right to judge somebody else's heart? We can tell by fruits. We can look and be fruit inspectors. But we do not know man's heart. So we don't have the right to condemn. Now listen to this. Too often we as Christians have judgmental attitudes. Why? Because of the blindness of our own faults. Our own faults can blind us from seeing our own faults, but we see everybody else's fault. And I believe the Lord is very concerned about His church when it comes to judging. Verse 1 and 2 here. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. The word judge here, everybody thinks it just means to judge somebody else's life. It means to condemn them. This is why Jesus is so, so strong in this passage. He's literally saying, if you condemn someone else, you will be condemned. He's going to judge you the same way. It's the same Greek word. That means condemn. The one who makes these statements must understand that the same God who will forgive you if you forgive is the same God who will condemn us if we become judge and jury in somebody else's life. When we have that, no, no right to do that. Now, I don't have time this morning to talk about church discipline. Is there such thing? Where a brother is about, they're in a fault or a sister's in a fault. You go to them. If they don't listen to you, you take another person with you. If then they don't listen to you, you bring them to the church. And then if they don't listen to the church. Now I know this sounds hard, but the Bible says you have nothing to do with them then. Because they won't listen to the church. They won't fall into the category of submissiveness. It won't take the... The, the Bible says that where there, in a multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. So we got to understand that God... And there's so many other places, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that, but... Yes, there is a time and a place. The Bible says in Galatians, He that is spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. So there is restoration from other Christians to people. But Jesus here is not necessarily talking about all that. He's just talking about the heart. Because from... Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew to the end of chapter 7, he's just worried about the heart. Getting the heart right. Okay? So this is part of the heart. Because in the final, when we stand before God someday, the worst thing you can do is do something that hurts you, not somebody else. Why would we want, why would we want to do that? Always remember... The story of the unforgiving steward. Remember how he was forgiven a lot? Yes. And God wiped it clean. Well, didn't say God, but we know it's God in, in, in essence. And so he goes out and he wants his money from the people who owe him. And how many of you know he literally messed up? Because when he didn't forgive, God not only didn't forgive him. He took everything away from him. And that's the way it is in our lives. God doesn't want us to get to the place where we don't forgive. 
Mark chapter 20, uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 24 says the same thing as Matthew. He says, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure, use it, or it will be measured to you. Now, in this passage, Jesus is talking about his teaching. Use it. Use it. Okay? The principle is teaching. Um, and the principle is still, if you don't use what God has taught, it will be used against you. It will be used against you. How do you think God's going to judge us? By His Word. Whether we did it or not. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's His commandments that are important. So, that's verse 1 and 2. Talking about how it's going to come back to us. Verse 3 to 3 through 5 is a very probing question. I mean, you ladies know this real well, and some men. You stick that probe in that piece of meat and make sure it gets up to the right temperature. Because you got to go down deep into the meat and put it in there. And as you smoke that meat, mm, it gets to the right temperature. And then you pull it out because it's ready, right? Well, here's a probing question. He says, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Now, I want you to go back. How much have I talked about the eye that is clear or the eye that is dark? It's almost like Jesus just keeps talking about it because He wants us to understand how important our eyes being the lamp or the, the window of our lives is. Because when we see dark, oh, how much darkness is in us. And it's easy then to condemn somebody else when our eyes are dark. But when our eyes are clear, then we can live that compassion life that Jesus lived. Then we can see as Jesus would see. And our eyes then, our, our bodies and our lives are full of light. So he alludes to this clear eye and this dark eye again. And he's using... Now, how many of you remember? Jesus was a what? What did he do? What was his occupation? He was a carpenter. Okay, what did he work with? He worked with wood. So it was very easy to understand why Jesus would use speck. Or I mean, a, you know, a, a speck would be like a splinter in our day. Or whatever. And a, you would, what you guys would call a log or a plank. Okay? How, you know, you might take this big piece of wood and and, you know, make a baseball bat or something, you know. But can you imagine having a log sticking out of your head? <laughs> now, I understand he's talking about it in a, in a metaphor way. He's talking about, you know, using it as an example. But this is the way a carpenter would think. All right? And so his question in verse 4 brings about... The, convict, the big convicting part. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye. I mean, you know, we like to remove specks from other people's eyes. Even though we can't even remove any. We're, we're, we're not even removing the one in ours. And yet we try though. We try and we try and we try. But Jesus is getting to a point here. Because you always have to understand who you're speaking to. Always have to understand if, who you're judging. Okay? And so really in strong language, in verse 5, He says, hypocrite. Now, how often does Jesus use the word hypocrite? Quite often in the Bible. And not only that, he's telling people who know what's right, but they choose not to do 
what's right. Okay? He's not looking at the world and going, you're a hypocrite. No, because they're not living for Jesus anyway. He's looking at those who know to do better, but aren't doing better. So, not only is he looking at brothers and sisters, how many of you remember he looked at the Pharisees too? And he called them hypocrites. Alright? Now, hypocrite means actor. I love this. Okay, we talked about this a lot. Hypocrite means somebody acting apart. And so, think about this. Jesus comes along, and, you know, I'm sure there were actors back in that day, and, you know, they were people. But, but here's what he's literally, I think, trying to say. In my own heart, I put these in my own words. Stop acting. Stop playing a role. And look out for yourself. Be yourself. Know yourself. Examine your own heart. Make sure your eyes are clear. Get those eyes clear. Get your heart clear. Because, in essence, the Christians, they are going to be judged too, but they're going to be judged by their works. And one work that's going to fall and be wood, hay, and stubble is the, those works that we try to work out of somebody else. And so this procedure of bringing ourselves to a place where I have clear eyes, he says, in, he says remove, watch this, after he says hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye. 